Hi, Tom from Fluval. We're going to uh, review some of the uh, filter questions that you guys have had based on the different filter videos we've done. We've had we've produced some videos specifically on our different filtration products and doing that we've gotten some feedback from you guys with some questions that you've had that pertain to all filters in general. So we listen to those things and we want to give you some solutions and some points to consider for some of the issues or confusion that some people have suffered when setting up and maintaining and running a filter long term on an aquarium. One of the things we, we hear every once in a while is that a filter doesn't restart after a power failure or after a temporary stoppage after you've unplugged it temporarily for whatever reason. You got to remember that these motors are very low wattage. Like if you look at a C series filter, you can see that it's a very small impeller that's in here. It really doesn't take much to stop a filter like this and in this design it's pulling in unfiltered water so there are possibilities for debris and obviously there's going to be bacterial biofilms building up in there. It requires frequent cleaning and if there is a stoppage nine times out of ten it has something to do with your impeller. Cleaning is usually involved and then of course over the years things do wear. Think of an impeller kind of like tires on your car. They do wear. It's running all the time. Every time you drive your car, you're on the road, you're driving, it's rotating, it's heating up, it's wearing down a little bit. The impeller will eventually wear too and does have to be replaced. Therefore, we offer them as a spare part sale in just about any pet store or online as you wish you can buy them. Uh, it's a very important spare part. So wearage and of course keeping it clean on a regular basis. Always investigate that if uh, the filter doesn't start up. Um, once your filter's been running for a while and you've been cleaning the media, get used to a certain level of performance. Some people have come back and said that their filters have slowed down. They don't seem to be running as quickly as they usually would have in the past. Well, one culprit that you've got to look at, or one thing that you really want to consider, let me just get this out in between here, is the actual filter input or the strainer. Uh, so let me clear this here, it's a little bit of water in it. This one we pulled out of a tank. This has a part of the priming device, or this is part of the priming device for a Flufel canister filter. Now within this strainer, you've got a little ball check that helps the filter prime. Well, it's a, it's a place where debris can potentially get caught up. So always have a look at this when you're maintaining your filter, check out the strainer. It's very easy to remove this ball, so take it out, take a brush, clean out the actual strainer and fitting in the ball itself and then replace it. It's that easy to do. So it's there because it's real practical to start up your filter, but it is a point where debris could get caught up. So make sure that's kept clean because if it accumulates in there, it could potentially slow the, the flow rate down. Another really important point is filter media. You want to make sure that that's replaced on a regular basis as called for on most of our packaging. If you look like at a polyester type, filter media that both mechanically filters the water and within this we have uh, for example clear max it's a chemical filter media we we recommend six to eight week replacement now if you're going for months on end and not replacing this media it's for sure going to slow your filter down even if you just rinse the surface off so you got to replace the media when it's called for foam blocks for example normal ballpark for a small filter is every three to six week, uh, months excuse me on bigger filters you can go for sure six months but they do have to be eventually replaced even filter media bags after you know half year of use uh, close to a year of use perhaps you do have to replace them they do tend to get really the pores get clogged almost permanently they get tougher to clean so it's good to replace them on a regular basis as called for priming the filter some people have had some issues with priming a filter for example, on this fluva that we have right here, you see uh, we all know this priming device. Uh, check the unit, make sure that it's working properly. There are parts available in case something does go wrong after a couple of years. Again, it's a moving part. It could, there could be components that wear. And then of course, back to the famous little ball check on the strainer. You gotta make sure that that's actually clean and liberated and that it moves around in there so that it can help the filter prime properly. Another super important point, now that I got the input in my hand, is the output. When you're priming your canister filter, it's better to have this output above the water surface. The reason being, because when you prime it, you're 100% sure that only the inlet or the input line is going to be primed with water. If you have the output submersed, there are chances water could prime back down the outlet and the inlet remains with 
with uh, pockets of air, which is not good. So this being out of the water, A, prevents, make sure that only the inlet side is filled with water and also allows any air in the canister to be easily evacuated out. So output side slightly above, above the water surface, filters primed, then put it into position, start up your filter. That really will help for that kind of issue. Another thing we hear about every once in a while is a filter making noise. There's some vibration or rattling noise some people have mentioned. Filter, clip-on filters for example have a cover and uh, that sits on the filter. This one's actually taped down because it's a brand new unit so I'm not going to bother peeling this off but if this is not properly positioned uh, it could vibrate and cause a bit of a rattling noise. So if you got a clip on, make sure that cover is on properly, that it's snapped into place so you don't hear any vibration. Then of course the impeller. Once again, back to the car tire analogy. If it wears, it's possible that the impeller can move a little bit on the shaft. That would cause vibration or a kind of a rumbling noise. Time to replace the impeller. Those things, it is a wearable item and that can be a reason for noise after some time, after a period of time. Then last but not least are leaks from a filter seal. Now, on a canister filter like this, you have an O-ring that's embedded in a kind of an accepting groove in the, in the motor unit itself. It's important to make sure that that's properly lined up, that it's clean and well seated before you push down on the head to, to seal the motor to the canister. Equally important is not to use Vaseline. Vaseline is a petroleum-based lubricant. It's not the right thing to put on a rubber o-ring. Fluval silicon lubricant is. It's a paste. You work in a small amount, clean the o-ring, put that in, and that is going to prolong the life of the o-ring and also assist in making the seating of the motor unit easy on your canister when you're setting it up. Those are generally the, uh, the issues. Um, also, one last point just wanted to make, uh, I wanted to make as well, is air emission from a canister. That was actually the last point. Uh, we have some filters, some people complaining that they see fine bubbles sometimes coming out of their, out of their filter system. You got to check after a filter gets old, after a couple of years, it's possible that perhaps some of the rubber grommets have stiffened up a little bit from being in the water and so forth. If, they bec if they're actually a little above the water, uh, it is possible that, uh, in this case that would be inlets and outlets like this, it is possible that they become stiff a bit, you've cleaned the filter, you've shifted the hosing, there can be little gaps where maybe air is getting aspirated in accumulates in the canister and gets blown out. So you got to make sure you might have to replace rubber grommets or change hosing eventually if you find that over time your the air has, has started air has started entering your aquarium. Filter media as we pointed out before too, it's important to replace it as called for because it tends to compact and plug up with debris more than creates in larger canisters like an FX series for example creates more of a vacuum and a suction within the canister because of the blockage and can cause air being pulled in from areas where it shouldn't be if the, if the filter media was kept clean. So that basically covers the main six points uh, that we've heard about. Uh, if you have any other questions, we'd love you to contact us on fluvalaquatics.com. Please check out our other videos and feel free to ask us any questions anytime you like.